Hey everyone, it's Biggs. Welcome back. Boy, do I have something special for you guys today. It's minus 28 degrees Celsius outside right now. For anybody that doesn't live north like I do, you know, you're probably just thinking this looks absolutely horrible. But the reason I'm standing out here in the middle of nowhere is right across the street there is this something super, super special. Now, I'm going to put the link up here in the corner. A couple of years back, my dear friend, Miss Rachel O'Leary, was here in Winnipeg to do speaking at the local Aquarium Society, and we took her to see this incredible place then. This place now, that old facility is still running, but the new state-of-the-art the, the, the state of the facility is like out of this world. It is absolutely incredible. My dear friend, Peter Waldner, uh, who, who runs it, is the basically running the Ridgeland Aquaculture Farm. And basically they are one of Canada's premier producers of top quality Arctic char. This thing is absolutely outstanding. Let's take a look. <laughs> Richmond Aqua Farms, home of Manitoba grown Arctic char. Now, if you would have seen Rachel's video, towards the end, you would have seen that where we took a tour of the new facility as it was being built. The old facility was incredibly impressive. However, the new one we are visiting today is truly a world-class, state-of-the-art Arctic char production and rearing facility. The Ridgeland Aqua Farm was started 17 years ago by Peter and his cousin Mark as a method of diversifying their farming operations of their colony and still in keeping a long tradition of producing high quality food products. Whereas the old facility was considered a 60 ton production facility, this new facility is actually 220 tons, three, more than three and a half times the size. Every one of these large hexagon holding tanks is 27 feet across and nine feet deep contain 30,000 gallons of recirculated fresh water. You'll notice that all the hexagon tanks are attached to each other, so it makes it very easy to move fish from production side, for this is where they start as egg, to fry, all the way up to the finished production at the front of the house, similar to the old facility. The hexagon shape allows for no dead spaces, better water circulation, there's large drains in the center bottom of each one of these units, and the skimmer boxes can be seen over the side there, that triangular formation. We'll take a look shortly at the filtering system. It is absolutely incredible, the filtering system that runs this facility. The feeding of the Arctic char is fully automated as well. Feedings take place every 15 minutes in short bursts. Watching the water boil is truly impressive, watching the fish come for the food. There's the feeding system. This Arctic char facility goes through 1,000 kilograms of high quality specialized feed per day. This is the nursery and it has maintained water temperature at six degrees Celsius. The eggs here will incubate for up to 90 days before they will hatch. Once hatched, the fry take three months to fully absorb their yolk sac. They don't need to be fed until that time. And that is all takes place before they're added to the main facility. Water drips down through these egg chambers. Fresh recirculated water from the chiller. Here's one of those oxygen sensors. Everything is computer controlled. And if anything should change at any moment, Peter and Mark will get an alert directly to their phone. Once the fry have fully absorbed their yolk sac and they're ready to move on, this is the first stop, these large circular vats. This is the first stop before they make it into those large hexagon vaults. This is the first stage in their state-of-the-art filtration system. These are solid filter screens, and there are 10 units with 15 micron screens, and it's all fully automated. Nothing will pass this for solids. Next stage, water is moved to the next stage, which is the biological filtration. And K1 is kept like a massive fluidized bed filter. A 
And this strips all the biologicals out of the water, stripping the ammonia and so forth and maintaining the water quality, the absolute heart of the operation. The last stage of the filtration. This unit is hard to describe because it runs underground and it runs for the entire filtration unit. This is their CO2 scrubber. It's extremely highly aerated. This is the one that runs a larger one. It's harder to see. But over here, this is the smaller unit. This is one that runs the fry section. And you can see it here. It's a large corrugated plastic thing. And there's like these little nozzles above it, like almost like shower heads. And it rains down through it and then degasses the water and strips the carbon dioxide out. Four of these massive pumps run each section of this warehouse. And they provide 6,000 gallons per minute. This is not your average little aquarium pump. This is their bank of ozone generators. Ozone is injected into the water for two purposes. One, it help helps maintain impeccably cleaned water, but two, it also helps to ward off bacterial infections. As well, these are their oxygen generators. Arctic charby and cold water fish require copious amounts of oxygen. These units are the low head oxygen units. There's a giant series of pipes that run underneath all the way from the far end run all the way down to feed each of them. And these units also have big plates. Water comes up, water goes through the units, goes through a plate, a diffusion plate, and then that's where ozone and oxygen are added into the units, and it breaks it down into fine micro bubbles, and then it goes out to these distribution pipes, these green pipes, are basically like a large uh, type of spray bar, for better lack of a word, and it continues the circulation for the way that they respond to it. Very, very efficient method of delivering oxygen. So not only is this unit the lifesaver, this measures the art potential, which is set at 270, and also maintains the oxygen potential. And Peter was just telling me that in the event that there ever is a failure, say a pump or something, this unit here will kick on and it'll increase the oxygen potential. These little hoses go right down to the bottom, and they have kind of the same sort of thing as you'd have for one of those garden sprinkler hoses with lots of tiny micro holes, and then oxygen will be pumped into there to bring the oxygen potential back up. Same as when the, the, the Arctic char are being fed, their, their heart rate goes up, there's a lot of activity, there's a lot of splashing, oxygen potential and holding potential of the water goes down a little bit. This unit will kick on real quickly and it'll fill up that oxygen potential to maintain it at 10. So it's truly the lifesaver of the whole system. The Ridgeland Aqua Farm is truly a state-of-the-art facility. And it's the only one of its kind in Canada and they produce a truly world-class fresh product. They are using leading-edge clean technologies that allow for the best environmental performance in the industry while monitoring and maintaining a very high standard of animal care and welfare. They are truly setting the bar. It takes two years from a hatching fry to a full adult ready for processing. This is the final stage. These are the adults just before they go into the processing plant. They've moved their way all the way from egg to fry, all the way through the facility to this final stage. Let's go take a look at that finishing facility. In this climate controlled, government certified processing plant, the fish are pumped in, they go through the different machinery, pass through the filleting machine. Then the last stage is this machine. Each Arctic char has 36 pin bones. And this machine is the specialized machine that removes those pin bones. And it's the last stage to make sure of quality control to deliver that beautiful final product. So not only are they producing a world-class product in the Arctic char, they are stewards for the environment in maximizing resource efficiency by recycling nutrients from the wastewater through the production of healthy organic homegrown produce. They are even using the fish offal by grinding it up and fermenting it to create an incredible 100% natural and organic fish fertilizer. The facility is not open to the public. However, you can purchase fillets processed to order and they can be reached via their webpage or by Facebook. I'll put the links in the description. 
And I must extend my personal thanks to my dear friend Peter for taking the time to give me a tour of this incredible facility. Thank you kindly for watching, my friends. Take care.